Hi, this is Daryl Peterson with MicroMeasurements, and this afternoon I'm going to uh, walk you through the steps of installing a strain gauge on something you might not have thought of. Uh, here we're going to install a strain gauge on one of these small stones. What I'm going to do is pick one of these. Uh, I'm kind of, you know, just kind of browsing through them, and I've got one here that looks like a pretty good choice. Uh, it's got a little more surface area than some of these others, so I'll just pull this one to the side and take these others and push them out of the way. And the idea here is to illustrate that you can, in fact, install, install strain gauges on materials other than like metal beams and parts and components. Now, in the case of civil engineering structures, one of the things we like to do typically is pick larger size gauges to get a little bit more averaging. So what we're going to use to put a gauge on this is actually going to be a two element T rosette. It's called a CEA 06 250 UTA 350. That's a two element uh, T rosette. It's got two sensitive grids on it. And uh, we'll end up just getting that installed this afternoon. And I'll show you the process of how we'll do that. First step, which is very similar to what you would do with metals, is first step is you're going to degrease it. And in order to do that, I'm going to take a gauze pad just like this and take a little bit of the micro measurements, uh, M line GC6 isopropyl alcohol uh, to degrease it. So I'm just going to take the cap off of it, take the gauze pad, fold it, and fold it in half again, put a little bit of the solvent on it, and then just wipe off both sides of this little rock. And again, all you're trying to do is lift off any contamination from uh, me or you picking it up and, and handling it and that sort of thing. We get the oils off our hands, transferred on that surface, and we just want to kind of get those off before we kind of get started. And quite frankly, the process for installing strain gauges on things like concrete and rock has a lot of similarities to the process that you would use for installing strain gauges on metals. Now, once you've degreased it, the next step is to create a little bit of a surface uh, texture to it. If I hold it up in the light, you can see it's nice and shiny, and we want to sort of knock some of that shine off. So I'm going to take a piece of 220 grit uh, silicon carbide paper. I'll just take it and fold it, and then I'm just going to sand and crosshatch across the top surface of this rock, try to keep it from moving around too much. And all I'm trying to do is to create some texture. In general, you want some you want some texture to create a better surface for bonding. So essentially what you're doing is trying to take some of that shine off of that surface. I'll sand it one direction, and then I'll take it and turn it and kind of go in the opposite direction. Just like that. And you know, as you can kind of see, I've created kind of this dull surface, and that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I'm going to take another gauze pad and a little bit more of the alcohol, and I'll degrease it once again. Basically, I'll hold it up, kind of wipe it back and forth like so. And when that alcohol evaporates, we should see that it's got a much, much duller surface, and that's exactly what we're chasing after. You know, anytime you're putting strain gauges on materials that are real shiny, it just means it doesn't have as much surface area. I take it and I flip it over, see how shiny it is on that side and how dull it is on this side, and that's exactly what we want to see. And the last step I'm going to use for cleaning is I'm going to take a little bit of the micro measurements uh, neutralizer, the Imprep neutralizer. It has a little blue tip on it. Put a couple of drops right here on the surface. And then I'll take one of these cotton tip applicators and just kind of clean that surface, just trying to get any dust and any contamination that might be on it. Uh, just trying to get the rest of that off, and I'll just give it a good scrub, like so. And then I'll dry up whatever's left using a gauze pad. So just kind of single wipe it. Take it, refold it, or get a clean side going the other direction. Now, we've got this uh, stone basically ready to put a gauge on. So what I'm going to do next is find my work surface, which would be a piece of glass. Take a little bit more of the blue tip bottle, squeeze a few drops out, and then take another gauze pad. 
And what I'm going to do is clean off the piece of glass because my strain gauge is going to come in contact with that. Along with that, I'm going to locate my pair of blunt nose tweezers and I'll clean the tips of them as well. I'll just wipe that off just like so. So I've got the tweezers cleaned, I got the piece of glass, and then I'll locate the strain gauges. I'm going to open up the package. And I've got the gauges here. I'm going to reach inside with the pair of tweezers. And just take the folder out. I'll take the remaining gauges, put them back inside of the package. Now this, this is again as a two element T rosette. You'll see that you've got two sensitive grids. You've got four, two for each grid, a uh, copper coated tab. Uh, this would be the top side of the gauge. You can tell because it's nice and shiny. And if I flip it upside down, this is the dull side of the strain gauge. Kind of hard to see here, but this is much duller than this side. And the reason for that again is to promote adhesion. This side of the strain gauge gets chemically cleaned and there's some other processing to promote adhesion to help make it stick to the surface you're trying to bond it onto. In our case, we're going to glue it onto this little piece of rock. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to open up the folder that has the strain gauge and I'm going to reach inside, grab the gauge just by the edge, I'm going to lay it onto my cleaned glass plate, just like so. Again, shiny side up. And then I'm going to take a piece of this gauge installation tape. This is a pretty big roll. It's kind of hard to see in the camera, but I'm going to take about a two or three inch piece of it, throw it away because it could have picked up some dust. But I'll take another piece of this tape. It's about four inches long. And what I'm going to do is fold the very ends of it over. We call those buddy tabs. I had a customer that was teaching a class, called them little buddy tabs, and I liked that, told her I was going to use that. So put the little buddy tabs on, and then take the piece of tape, lay it down in place over top of the string gauge, just like that, and then I can pick it up, and I never have to touch that gauge. So now I'll take it, bring it over to the rock like this, and we're going to put it in about the center. If you if you take a gauge and you lay it down and you're not totally happy with the position of it, all you got to do is pick it up and move it. And I'm going to use a little bit of tape just to try to help hold that down. It's a pretty good size gauge, so there's a lot of area that we're going to need to clamp in order to get this uh, cured properly. Well, in this case, we're going to use the Embond 200, which is a quick setting cyanoacrylate. I've got the Embon 200. I've also got the catalyst. We'll put the catalyst on first. I'll show you how to do that. Then we'll apply the adhesive and bond it into place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the tape. We'll peel it back about an extra quarter of an inch, exposing the bonding side of the gauge. There you can see a nice close-up there of the strain gauge. So I'm going to take the brush cap applicator out of the catalyst. And I want you to, as you're doing this, touch it on the inside part of the bottle about 10 or 12 times. Put the vast majority of the catalyst right back in the bottle, just like that. And then just take it and use a single wipe. This is a pretty big gauge, so I'm going to use two wipes and drag it off. And then now we let it sit there for a full 60 seconds. So what we're allowing to happen is the isopropyl alcohol that's in this catalyst, we got to give it time to air dry. So this catalyst is about 98% isopropyl alcohol, and you got to wait for that alcohol to air dry, and the 2% is what it leaves behind, which is the actual catalyst. So you wait. You hurry up, and you wait. We've got about another 30 seconds to go. Now, once we've waited that time, the alcohol has flashed off, and then we're ready to apply the adhesive. And since this one is a pretty small space, what I'm going to do is put some adhesive right at the junction of the edge of the tape and the stone, but I'm also going to put a little bit more into the area and just try to move very quickly to get this gauge bonded down into, into place. It's got a little nozzle here, and typically we ship you an extra nozzle that comes with the adhesive system. 
that extra nozzle allows you to use it even if the other one gets kind of stuck in place. All right, so once you get the cap off of it, you're ready to apply the adhesive at the junction of the tape and the gauge. So what I'm gonna do is put a couple of drops right here along the edge. I'll put it on the stone as well. I'll take the tape and pull it over and kind of hold it. And then as quick as you can, try to wipe it down into place to get a fresh layer of adhesive that flows up underneath. And then take your thumb and put it over top of it. And you want to hold it on there a full 60 seconds. So check your timer. And you're talking a full 60 seconds of thumb pressure. So again, you hurry up and wait. So the question is, can you install strain gauges on materials like concrete and rock? And I would say the answer is yes. Uh, we see a lot of our customers that are installing gauges on non-metallic structures and materials. Uh, sometimes you have to go to a, an adhesive system that's going to have a higher viscosity. It's going to be a better filler material. M-Bond 200 is good if the surface is pretty smooth, and in this case, the surface of this rock was very, very smooth. We could tell that from the reflection. Uh, but we look at smoothness, and we also look at porosity, and the more porous that surface is, really, the, the more you want to uh, make a shift toward using a two-part epoxy uh, to glue it down. Now, once you've had one minute of thumb pressure on it, then you can basically take your thumb off. If your thumb gets bonded a little bit like mine does, instead of just pulling straight off, just take it and rotate it like that and it should release. And then typically what we like to do is let this sit for two minutes and then we can take the gauge installation tape uh, off of the strain gauge. So again, once you put on the adhesive system, you wipe it down into place and then we want one minute of thumb pressure and then you let it sit for two minutes and then you're ready to remove the gauge installation tape. And then once you get that gauge installation tape removed, then you're ready to go ahead and solder, in this case, solder the wires directly onto these copper coated tabs. It should be a pretty straightforward process because that copper is there to help promote uh, easier uh, soldering. And after you've waited your two minutes, we're ready to go ahead and remove the tape. So if you watch, it doesn't really matter which side that you start with. I'm just trying to hold the, the stone down into place. And I'll take the tape. And I like to peel it directly back on itself, just like I'm showing you. And now we've got the gauge bonded in place. I'll hold it up in the camera so you can see it. But you can see how these CEA series gauges can conform to a non-flat surface. And that's one of the things I'm looking for. I'm trying to see, does it look like all the edges of the gauge are down? Is it nice and uniform? And is it following the contour, in this case, of the rock? And sure enough, it is. So again, optical inspections, good way to, to kind of tell whether or not you're headed in the right direction. And that's usually the first stage of checkout of an installed gauge. Is, does it look okay? Is it in the right location? Is it down nice and uniform? And do you see any signs of irregularities underneath the grid? And if you don't, then you can go ahead and move on to the next step, which would be attaching the wires onto the strain gauge. So if you'd like to find out more about these CEA series strain gauges or the Embon 200, or the process in general of putting strain gauges on a non-metallic structure like this piece of rock, uh, please feel free to take a look at our website at www dot micro dash measurements dot com or you can also take a look at our youtube channel just go to youtube dot com and search for micro dash measurements thank you